Hello and welcome everybody to this very, very special occasion, that being the finale of the Dendi Theatre Organ. There may be an element of sadness among some of you today, but instead we'd like you to think of today as one of celebration because Eliza here has been entertaining us here at the Dendi for over 54 years and has introduced us to many, many special people. And one of those special persons is here today. So to open proceedings, would you please make welcome the President of Melbourne Theatre Organ, Mr Scott Harrison. Thanks, Ian. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to this, the final program here at the Dendi Cinema Brighton. As Ian says, it is kind of a sad occasion, but in many respects, it's a day of celebration, and we'll talk a bit more about that a bit later. This organ represents a number of firsts for the Theatre Organ Society of Australia Victoria Division, or as we call ourselves now, Melbourne Theatre Organ. It was the first large-scale Wurlitzer to leave the States and come to Australia, installed in 1924. It left the US, I believe, in 1923. It was the first organ that was installed on a lift, as it would come up majestically in the cinema for people to enjoy. It was the first society or theatre organ society purchased instrument owned and operated. The society proudly bought the instrument in 1963 with the closing concert held in November 1963, with the removal taking place in the early parts of 1964. The organ opened here in 1967 and was at the time the only society owned and operated theatre organ in the country. It represented a first for many touring artists who came to Australia for the first time to perform to a theatre organ, theater organ audiences using this very instrument. And in more recent years, certainly the last couple of years, it represents a first again for Melbourne Theatre Organ as we have installed a Uniflex relay system on this instrument. That means a state-of-the-art relay system giving the organist amazing control on what this organ is capable of doing. Anyway, you don't need to hear all about that right now. Let's hand back to Ian as we enjoy the program today and he'll introduce our artist. Ian, thank you. Well said, Scotty, and uh, yes, some wonderful, wonderful memories. Well, where did this all begin? Well, for me personally, whilst I was still at school back in the late 50s, Mr Ward, fondly referred to as Bert, used to pay me 10 shillings and sixpence to show the Saturday matinee films, the Marx Brothers, Tom and Jerry, Batman and Robin, all that beautiful old stuff. However, there was another young lad at that very same school and he fancied himself as a theatre organist. His name, David Johnston. And dapper David convinced Mr Ward that he should be the first resonant dindy organist. In fact, I thought I saw David backstage just a moment ago is that really you, David Johnston? He hasn't changed a bit. I haven't seen you since school days. Johnson, Nothing's you changed, has you, it? You haven't changed a bit, my boy. Look at this, the school uniform still fits in places. Hey, look, look, I've even got I've even got the school hymn book. Oh dear. And mate. the mask is in school colours. Ah, How about that, eh? Colour coordinated. Ah, oh, gee, they were the days. David, where did you first start playing the Dendy organ? Well, it went back a bit before then, and you might wonder why that silly song I just played, Cruising Down the River. Silly old song it is. And I can take my mask off now. Cruising down the river, I first heard and saw a th uh, theatre organ in the Capitol Theatre, and it was this organ, Ian Davies was the organist, and that was his theme song. And later on, when I became an organist, I adopted that theme song as well, so that's where that all comes from. Mm, amazing. But the actual, okay, having an organ here, came a little bit later. And we can thank our school, good old Halliburton College, that there's ever been an organ here. And one person in particular, Brian Pearson. Remember Brian? Mr. Pearson, if you don't mind. P.O. to us <laughs> and other names. <laughs> but Brian, oh look, he's up on the screen. Yes, look, did you know that just recently this year, Brian was 93 years old. Amazing. 90, he turned up at a concert of mine in Adelaide, just like the old days, gave me a detention and everything. It was wonderful. 
but he turned up there and but he said to the school because the school had grown from a little school of 200 when I started to 800 we couldn't fit in the school hall so he said how about we have down here at the Dendy Theatre have the speech night down here well the Dendy was sort of struggling a bit in those days and they said yeah sure come down so they hired an electronic organ uh, it was a Lowry Heritage organ, valve yeah. organ, yeah. It was right here. I was the school organist and dear old Bert Ward, you mentioned him, heard me play and he said, David, <clears throat> the organ's not going back for a week or so. He said, would you like to come down and play it for us? Oh, look on the screen, there's me again. Look, me, oh, 17 year old. That was the first night at the Dendy. 60 years ago, I ended 60 years ago. I think you're a con man, David. Look, how about you brush up backstage and with a bit of luck, we might have you back a little later in the program. Well, I'm still only 14, so I've got to grow a few years before I can play the world. Off you go, my friend. See you later, bye. Goodness me. Well, enough nonsense. It's time now to introduce our first guest artist today. He's a gentleman that needs no introduction to lovers of theatre organ, and he has the greatest respect here for the Dendy Wellitzer. Would you please make welcome Mr. John Giacci? <laughs> this is a little weird isn't it um, what a strange world we live in at the moment uh, it seemed as though all of the forces of nature conspired uh, against us to be here firstly there is uh, that disease I'm sick and tired of saying what it is nowadays uh, and then uh, we uh, have had uh, all sorts of various lockdowns um, I was the the recipient of uh, a very nasty bite on the uh, heel of my right foot by bull ant just a few days ago up on my, um, up, up on my property uh, and I'm just getting over that now uh, and then during rehearsal we had a ciphering cacophony of Indian minor birds that decided to nest themselves in the roof here of the theatre but anyway we eventually got here and it's a real pleasure uh, to be here after so many years uh, at the Dendy. For those of you that don't know I was uh, at one point uh, playing the organ here on Saturday evenings and uh, it's it's been really wonderful to get to reacquaint myself with the instrument and and get to know it and a lot of work has been done and she's sounding really really good and I'm just so thrilled to be here. Um, that was uh, Vincent Yeoman's I Know That You Know from Hit The Deck and um, uh, uh, done in the style of uh, the, the late George Wright who celebrated his 100th birthday last year. Um, he's a, a man who's had an influence on, uh, the, on many theatre organists including myself. Overtures normally appear at the end of organists repertoire uh, but I thought that I would bring one in in its closer to its anatomically correct place 
at the beginning of the program. This is uh, Franz von Suppé's Poet and Peasant Overture, which he wrote in the depths of poverty, and he sold the rights to the Poet and Peasant for virtually next to nothing, and very sad that he wasn't able to enjoy the popularity that the Poet and Peasant achieved throughout the generations. We'll start with the 15-inch diaphonic diapason in the main, then move to the 10-inch open, uh, and then you'll hear the oboe horn, and then we'll open her up and let her rip.
Billy Mayo was a musician of the 1930s who was a very talented pianist uh, whose claim to fame was through the piece of music Marigold and I suppose to a lesser extent Bats in the Belfry, two numbers that have found their way in the repertoire of theatre organists over the decades. This one is a delightful piece of music. It's the second movement from his aquarium suite called Fantail. The triumvirate Henderson, Brown and De Silva teamed together to write the music to the initially the Broadway play Good News, which then turned into a film in 1937, followed by a post-World War II version uh, in about 1947. Good News opened on Broadway in the same year that Jerome Kern's Showboat did, and the critics whilst they thought that the uh, storyline to Good News, which was really just a collegiate romance, uh, paled into insignificance against some of the more controversial themes that appeared in Showboat. Nevertheless, it did do very well, and uh, there's some really wonderful music in this selection, starting off with the title Good News, uh, followed by The Girl of the P Beta Phi, so I do apologise if my pronunciation is not correct, um, the Best Things in Life Are Free, uh, Lucky in Love, um, The Varsity Drag, and uh, we'll reprise the selection with uh, Good News.
great music from the pen of Henderson, De Silva and Brown. Moving right along for those who in the uh, who are who are uh, listening and uh, waiting for me to use the bells on the organ. So here they are. <laughs> That's brought us to the end of this afternoon's bracket of music. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Uh, as I said, it's been uh, wonderful to come here and reacquaint myself after. Goodness, I don't want to count the years. I, I fear that I may be too embarrassed. Uh, but I'd like to thank the Victorian Division of the Theatre Organ Society of Australia for persevering uh, in putting on this uh, event. Um, to farewell Eliza from this home where she's been for the last 50 odd years, uh, but also to uh, give a vote of thanks for being this organ's custodian. Um, Eliza now is 98 years old and um, it's just wonderful to know that throughout the decades and the generations uh, she's been looked after so lovingly. Uh, I certainly remember my days looking after the instrument helping Bruce Hester who looked after it for well over 40 years and uh, Nick and his crew now look after it and uh, I've got to say it's really been a real pleasure to play this instrument and with its new specification uh, to evoke uh, some of the sounds that we've never heard from this instrument in the last 50 or 60 years. Um, I'd like to close this piece of music with a, a piece that I would always herald the film in uh, in the days when I was here at the Dendi and uh, I think that it's uh, evo evocative of the organ's past, its current and hopefully its future. It's Theatreland. <laughs> Thank you.
John, thank you so much. John is uh, one of the true Dendi legends from Esty here. Who's on first? What's up second? Well, next up is someone that needs no introduction. He's not only the president of Melbourne Theatre Organ, but he's also the resident organist of the city of Kingston. He did his apprenticeship here at the Dendi and has played this world its organ more times than I care to remember. And as a special treat, he's managed to lure his dear friend, that sweetheart of song, Ruby Page, to join us today. So please welcome Scott Harrison and Ruby Page. Gonna take a sentimental journey Gonna set my heart at ease Gonna take a sentimental journey To renew old memories Got my bag, I've got my reservation Spent each dime I could afford Like a child in wild anticipation Long to hear that all aboard Seven, that's the time we leave at seven I'll be waiting up for heaven Counting every mile of railroad track That takes me back Never thought my heart could be so yearning Why did I decide to roam? Gonna take a sentimental journey, sentimental journey home. Spent each time I could afford Like a child in wild anticipation Gonna hear that all aboard Seven, that's the time we leave at seven I'll be waiting up for heaven Counting every mile of railroad track That takes me back Never thought my heart could be so yearning Why did I decide to roam? Gonna take a sentimental journey Sentimental journey home Sentimental journey home Look, I'm going to play a couple of pieces on my own now. Um, members might recall I recorded this organ back in 2003. Uh, I did a CD called Distinctly Dendy. And I thought it would be kind of fitting as the last program of this organ to play at least one piece from that. First piece I'm going to play for you is a lovely piece of music that came from a musical called uh, Joanna. And it's a lovely song called I'll Catch the Sun. Hope you enjoy this. I'll 
I'll catch the sun. Beautiful song, actually. I remember the first time I actually heard that song ever was actually performed right here at the Dendy with David Ashton Smith singing it with Tony Fennell and the company. Uh, no, needless to say, I can't do Tony's sort of a rendition of that, but that's my own rendition of that, and it's a lovely sound. And it's great to hear it on the Wurlitzer again for the final time here, at, certainly at the Dendy Theatre. This next piece... And my uh, final solo piece I'm going to play for you now is a piece that uh, is, a, is a song that's very, very um, uh, a favourite, if you like, of um, Paul White. It's a piece of music that I, I learned. It was written in 1944. Uh, it's a beautiful little piece of music called Moonlight in Vermont. Hope you enjoy this. We'd like to do a little um, a little blues number now here, especially for our young Scott here, one of his favourite songs, one of the reasons why it's in the repertoire today, and it's called Georgia. an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind Georgia oh Georgia a song for you comes as sweet and clear as moonlight through the pines 
Other arms reach out to me Other eyes smile tenderly Still in peaceful dreams I see the world leads back to you Georgia, Georgia Find. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my Thank you. Well, it was lovely to work with Ruby here for the last time anyway, and certainly in this venue, and uh, what a lovely sound. Well, folks, as we said earlier, it's been an amazing day in many respects, uh, but it's not over yet. But before we go any further, there are a few people we need to thank. This organ, as we said earlier, represents a series of firsts, and there's one more very special first which we're going to talk about in just a minute. But before we do that, I think it's very important to remember all the folks who have contributed to the life of this instrument here at the Dendy Cinema Brighton and before when it was at the Capitol. We're thrilled to think that at least a couple of the folks that were removal or they're involved with the removal of the organ are still with us today, namely Julian Arnold and of course David Johnson who we've already seen today. Uh, those guys themselves have contributed tremendously to this instrument uh, and Julian of course to many instruments throughout our society here in Victoria and the greater country of Australia. But, you know, without the venues themselves, there would be no theatre organ, there'd be no theatre organ society. And I'd like to take this particular moment to pay a very special thank you to Palace Cinemas. Now, Palace have been the operators here of the Dendy Cinema Complex for the past 29 years, and we've had such a wonderful relationship with them. And uh, we were supposed to have them here today to do a proper presentation, but we were unable to do that given the circumstances. However, we do have a plaque, which I'm going to get handed to me just now. And this plaque is a small, but a, a very much heartfelt appreciation, a token of appreciation that we want to present to the Palace team. Ben Sicola, the chief executive, uh, and his amazing team, both here at Brighton with Heather and Brad, but also the greater team at the head office up in um, Baldwin. Palace have been a tremendous supporters to us uh, and have been so gracious in allowing us to use this venue on so many occasions and have supported our artists, our organists and our society. 
And uh, with the redevelopment of this venue to be uh, uh, had more cinemas, we wish Palace every success under the sun. And uh, so, Ben, thanks, mate, and to your team. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, like I said, new beginnings. With everything, there's a new beginning. And uh, we are so excited. This instrument is doing something which is another first. We talked about the first earlier on. This organ is returning back to its original theatre, which is unheard of in this day and age, to have an organ go back into a theatre, but let alone an organ going back to its original theatre. So uh, we are anticipating by November 2024 when this organ turns 100 and the Capitol Theatre in Swanston Street turns 100. The organ and the Capitol will be reunited and the instrument will be presented publicly again in that year. We are very grateful to the tremendous cooperation we've been getting from RMIT, who are the owners and custodians of the Capitol. And I'd like now to um, pause briefly to uh, pass over to Lisa French, who's the um, Professor of Communications with RMIT, who will say a few words on behalf of RMIT. Thanks, Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa French. I'm really pleased to be with you to be partnering on RMIT's behalf with the Theatre Organ Society to bring the organ back to the Capitol Theatre in Melbourne, which is where it originally was. This is a fantastic opportunity. We're really, really thrilled because it'll introduce our students to this as a facility and make it available to Melbourne. And I understand it's the largest organ ever to be put back uh, to its original location. So it's a thrilling occasion. Thanks so much, Lisa. Look, it's so exciting. Um, I still have to keep pinching myself to know that the organs are actually going back to the theatre and RMIT is so amazingly excited as well. So folks, this is where the work begins. This instrument has to come out of this venue. Significant fundraising has to take place and uh, there's merchandise available and things like that you can purchase through our website or links through our website at melbournetheatreorgan.com.au and uh, also you can go to the RMIT website and there'll be a web page set up which actually has a means in which you can make donations towards the reinstallation of this beautiful Wurlitzer. So once again folks, very exciting times indeed and I look forward to seeing you again at the Capitol. Thanks. Well, now, as promised, let's welcome back, uh, last but not least, Mr. David Johnston. Thank you, Ian. And look, absolute proof that I used to play at the Dendy Theatre. This mm. used to be in the front window. Remember the record bar and Les Sainor? Certainly do. He did all these signs. So proof that I actually did play here, Ian. Fantastic. But, David, before you start, Eric Reed, who's up in the projection box probably for the last oh, time. Oh, Uncle Eric. Is he still there? He's still there, and uh, he stumbled across this old 1924, 1924 silent film, which I think really? came down from the Prince George, called Lizzie's of the Field. Goodness me, 1924, that is the same year that this organ went into the Capitol Theatre. And look, from memory, there's an Australian actor, Billy Bevan. That, he stars in it. That's him. I'll tell you what, I haven't seen it for a long, long time, but Eric, could you run the film? I'll see what I can do. Roll the film, Eric. Okay, I'll see what we can do. Thank you. 
Well, Eliza, as we affectionately know in this organ, is about to sing her last song in this venue. It's a song very appropriate today. It was written for the opening here in 1967 by the English organist George Blackmore, simply called the Dendy March. We were the first group in Australia here in Melbourne to buy an organ from a theatre, renovate it and put it back in a theatre. And we thought we were pretty good. But in 1968, the young, yeah, very then young, very young, Lynn Larson came here from America. And he'd had a lot of experience with theatre organs in America. He went through this organ with a fine tooth comb and transformed it from a good organ to a beautiful musical instrument. But every once in a while it would come out with something mm, unexpected. And so he named it Eliza, after Eliza Doolittle. Remember Eliza Doolittle by Fair Lady? The common flower girl, Professor Higgins, transformed into the beautiful lady. But once in a while, Eliza would come out with something really terrible. If you remember that scene from the Ascot races when she disgraced herself? Well, this Eliza has behaved very well today. And uh, she's done very well so far, but knowing Eliza, she could wait till the very last chord before she plays up. Let's see what happens. Let's keep our fingers crossed if we say goodbye to the dandy with the Dindy March. <laughs> 